You know, Sarah, I think one thing uh, the White House is going to be celebrating today is the fact that 80 percent of its staff is coming back to work. Dennis McDonough, uh, the chief of staff, he usually has four assistants. He was only down to two over the last 16 days. So having a full White House up and running is something I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. Uh, maybe if the weather's nice, the president can go and play golf uh, this week. But yes, no, they do need to start he getting back Robert to work. We have Robert here in New York. He can't go play golf today. Well, no, not today. I'm this weekend. Oh, this weekend. Um, <laughs> uh, Robert, have you gotten any calls yet? Hi, Juliana. <laughs> hey, he's not saying. Well, you know what, no Juliana? <laughs> but before we move on, I just want to play for you a little bit of a soundbite here from President Obama about what he said Washington should focus on now that the crisis is over. We still need to pass a law to fix our broken immigration system. We still need to pass a farm bill. And with the shutdown behind us, and budget committees forming, we now have an opportunity to focus on uh, a sensible budget that is responsible, that is fair, uh, and that helps hardworking people all across this country. So he's going back, Juliana, to his ambitious agenda. The problem is, look, at they couldn't even get the government open for 16 days and barely prevented a U.S. government default. How is he going to get these projects done? Right. If they can't keep the government open for 16 days, how are they going to get tax reform done? I think one of the biggest things that the president, this White House, needs to turn to now is fixing the rollout of his health care law. Um, that's something that everybody has not been focusing on over this debt uh, and shutdown fight. But one of the big questions right. going forward is whether or not Congress and the White House is going to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time, especially since really this deal just kicks the can down the road to December, January, well, and February. February, that may, and this fiscal sword is going to still be hanging over them. Right, Juliana, that may be the stereotype right now. It is the first year of a second term of this administration. Robert Wolf with us, and he has been through thick and thin. When did you first meet the president? Um, 06. 06. So it's been a long road for you and your golfing partner. What yeah. has changed after this battle in the White House? You're not in the White House. No. You're from a distance. But what has changed <laughs> within the Oval Office in the West Wing? Well, two things. I think, uh, as Juliana, uh, Juliana and I have spoken before, business is supportive of where the president's going. They were not for this shutdown. They were not for negotiations on the debt ceiling. They're for immigration reform and they're for corporate tax reform. So you have a lot of things aligning with the business community. I would say secondly, I think it's really important. We have seen a lot of the moderate Republicans talk about immigration and how key it is. As Sarah mentioned earlier, you just saw Boehner break the Hastert rule. The question is, does immigration become the next thing where Republicans can really shift? And I think okay. that would be a very important thing. Ian, what is your optimism that we can actually govern in Washington versus go, what was it, 16 days? 16 days. 16 days? Oh, no, my, my optimism is that despite the fact that we can't govern, that people are still going to be pretty optimistic about U.S. companies, the direction of the U.S. economy, and the rest. I mean, that, that's my optimism. And, and that's, in, in a sense, that's why Congress continues to get a free pass on not governing. Um, I, I completely agree with Juliana that uh, focusing on rollout of health care, which was the signature piece of legislation that Obama actually passed over the course of five years of his presidency, um, is, is what he needs to focus on now. And they will indeed do that. And they'll hope to show that, paint that as a win across the the country, then right. they'll start talking about jobs again. I, I don't, I don't, I'd love to see great movement. Yeah, you'd love to see it, but, th but this, uh, this isn't even over, Juliana. We can't talk about the second term agenda here without talking about the fact that we have new deadlines on the debt. Days. January days and coming. February yeah, 7th for the debt ceiling again. One thing about the sequester that actually plays to possibly a real bipartisan deal is it's mainly about defense. Okay, defensive has overspent versus their budget. So you have to actually fix that in January. And my guess is the Republicans don't want the sequester to kick in how the impact of defense is in 14. So you may actually get some movement on some flexibility on the sequester as well. So, so Juliana, how does he deal with this? What is the strategy for the administration to get around these fiscal deadlines and even sequestration so that he can focus on what's important to him like immigration? Well, to Robert's point, I think that they do see the deal as uh, opening an avenue to p possibly deal with sequestration. It's one of the reasons that Democrats 
push to have some sort of budget deal done uh, before the before January when this new round of sequestration cuts uh, is set to kick in. But they have to get through. If you look at the timeline here, you could really see a scenario where because you don't have a hard deadline with December 15th, everybody gets to go home, celebrate Christmas and New Year's with their family, come back uh, in early January, and then be staring again at this mid-January deadline uh, to fund the government. Then it takes you to February 7th. Uh, when the government, when we hit the debt limit, and because they have the extraordinary measures that will get you about another month, uh, so it really looks like this is going to take us in to March. Now, to Robert's point, one reason why immigration uh, could be something that you could start to see momentum on mm. is because the Republican brand has been so tarnished that this is something that they may really need, and so that could help the White House here.